This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And we're going to talk all gadgety, geeky goodness with you here tonight. Uh, we have with us the crew, first of all, from the Big D Dormont in Studio C is the Chilla. Uh, the gadget guru over a big bank international esquire who just flew in the door to be on the show with us tonight. Oh, you when you when we talk about my awesome thing of the week, you'll you'll come to understand what it took to be here today. Oh yeah, did you like fly on a drone? Is that what happened? No, oh. I had car troubles coming out of Erie. Oh, oh wow, you came. Wait, you just got in from Erie last night. Oh jeez. But it it almost was. Hey, we're staying. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> also with us is the Dutters uh, as well. How you doing, Katie? Good. How's it going? Uh, you, 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 you've had no, no mishaps this week, have you? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. It's early in the week. <laughs> yes. I think you guys had more travel for once. We guys had more traveling than me, uh, for the weekend. Cause I, I mostly kind of stuck around. Uh, so <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you guys were all over the state, to, uh, this weekend, but anyways, this is the awesome cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. Email us at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Tweet us at awesomecast on the Twitter. And of course, follow awesomecast on the Facebook and, uh, page. And of course, a great awesome cast Facebook group. Uh, we get a few stories and discussions and we share the stories that we're interested throughout the week as well. Uh, so you can get a heads up on that and get some input uh, that, that really does help inform what we do here on the show. Uh, you can join us here live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. We are live on the Facebook uh, live. We are on the YouTube page. Uh, we are also on our Twitter and Periscope page. I see you guys out there. And, of course, over on the Twitch page for Sorgatron Media. If you're watching live right now on any of those formats, please uh, do us a solid. If you like what's going on, give us a heart, give us a like, give us a share just to help expand the uh, awesome cast and get it out in front of some new eyeballs here as much as we can. We do very much appreciate if you do that. Hit the hit the share, hit the hit the tweet, hit whatever that case may be. Also, uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast. Uh, uh, of course, those supporters include our friends at the coffee club level, Matt Weller, John DeGore, and John Carmen. And at the fan of show level, our friends Michael Fedor, pghmuseums.org, Professor Buzzkill, the great podcast at ProfessorBuzzkill.com, and Dave Podner of the Tiny Shutter Podcast. Uh, so happy to have uh, so many of our friends, fans, and other content creators supporting the show. And you guys can, too, at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Well, last week, of course, we talked about um, some home automation from the 90s, including um, I had a kind of a, a re-unboxing of some stuff I've been holding on to since 1996 uh, this week. Um, we're probably recording after the show, so I don't know what that's going to be yet. Surprise for all. Uh, so look out for the tweets and uh, everything and uh, that in your inbox as well. So I hope you guys have been enjoying that. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. And let's let, listen, you are already kind of teased at the beginning, Chilla. Tell me how you survived your car excursion to Erie. So coming home from Erie, lovely Erie, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. we visited the beach over the weekend, um, had a great time, got on to, or got on 79 South and about 20 miles into our ride home. We should have arrived home at 615 and we got home at 11 o'clock last night because the car broke down 20, 20, 25 miles south of Erie. Mm. Um, it's interesting in today's day and age, I never pay attention to things like, hey, what's the next exit? Hey, what mile marker am I at? Mm -hmm. Because I have things like smartphones and smart cars and all kinds of cool technology that lets me know, hey, in two miles, I need to get off or 
you know, be in the left-hand lane, et cetera. Um, so pulling off the road with an engine light flashing and a screeching engine, um, I was like, I don't know where I'm at. I don't know who to call. I'm like, oh, that's right. There's this cool little blue link button up on the um, mirror. Tap the button. Within probably about 10 seconds, I'm on with um, a an operator. They actually triangulated where my car was with GPS so they could dispatch tow trucks. Um, they actually, you know, said you're probably going to want to call emergency services to make sure that you know if, from a police perspective there's someone behind you um, you may need them to give you a ride because the other thing they do um, is they will give you free transport um, with COVID-19 and social distancing they really don't want you in the tow truck mm. um, so you use emergency services to get to a location because guess what you need? You need an address which you can be picked up at and they prepay for your Lyft drive, which I thought was super cool. Um, so all within the tap of a button and I don't have, I, I put a link to the Hyundai blue link. Mm -hmm. Keep in mind my car's um, seven years old. So I don't get, it's not a hybrid, so I don't get the, the charging dashboard. I don't get the curfew and speed alert, but I do get um, the panic notification, the survey link, stolen vehicle recovery, and most important from this trip, um, emer automatic emergency assistance. Um, I, I didn't need it from a point of view, like I wasn't in an accident, my airbags didn't deploy, um, but using that to just give me um, roadside assistance immediately was super helpful. I also thought I locked my keys in the car while I was on the trip, so I sent a remote mm -hmm. door unlock command to find out that no, they were just in a different pants pocket. But <laughs> um, the the feature, I, I was actually thinking about terminating the blue some of the Blue Link services because they do come at a cost. You get them, I think, three free for three years. Um, being on year seven, I was like, some of these features I've never, ever used. I'll probably save myself 50 bucks and get rid of it. Well, not anymore. I'll be keeping the Blue Link service throughout the life, probably, of the vehicle at this point um, and continuing to use it. The, the only interesting part, for those of you who aren't familiar with Erie, there aren't many car rental places that stay open past 5 p.m. Oh, yeah. So there's no there's no major airports. So there's like kind of no reason, right? Well, so no. So this is, guys, this is what I come to find out. I looked for like all the like downtown Erie um, rentals. Mm -hmm. There's an, there is the Erie International Airport. I didn't realize there was an Erie International Airport. It's still probably only like four gates, right? Oh yeah, it's, like four, it's, <laughs> like it's a, like, real small. Oh, I've been to those, and it's probably only international because like, it's so close to Canada. <laughs> maybe, um, but the fortunately, their uh, budget rental car stayed open until 9 p.m., um, and we got there at probably a little after seven. We were able to secure a car, go back to our broken down car at the shop, pick up some stuff out of it, um, and then started our trek home after a short stop at McDonald's for dinner um, because we hadn't eaten pretty much all afternoon and into the evening, and it was now like 8.30, 9 o'clock. Um, so all in all, I would say it was not the experience I was looking for, but mm -hmm. the Blue Link service definitely made it the smoothest experience I've ever had with a broken down vehicle. So now I, I uh, similarly, and have you, have you had other insurances with roadside or anything like this? Like in recent years, was this your first time in a long while dealing with something like this? So I've had other roadside assistance services like um, through Volkswagen and mm -hmm. also through even, um, 
even through Hyundai with our other car, I needed mm-hmm. to get a tire changed. And unfortunately, when they when they used the air wrench on the the lug nuts, they made it so tight that it was pretty much impossible yeah, for anyone with yeah. without a four way like a four way tire iron. Mm-hmm. Like I had mm-hmm. I had the little kit from out of the trunk on there, and I was <laughs> jumping up and down on it, and to, to no avail. <laughs> Me and the me and the guy actually grabbed opposite sides of the tire iron. Oh wow! And were, he was he was lifting up and I was pushing down to get it to to break the lug nuts. So so I, I um, I've had similar experiences with you know of course combination of the automatic which now you know went away along with COVID as a company. Mm-hmm. So uh, by the way, if anybody has a, a replacement for automatic for like it because I could have I could use some diagnostics on my. <laughs> my car right now actually um but between that because that always had the emergency you know thank you know thank goodness it was never needed to be used the actual we will send an ambulance to your place uh wherever the wreck has been um Mm -hmm. but we've had through geico i've used the roadside assistance um with with, uh you know our older car when it was having problems um i have not used the altel or not altel god the uh all all state that's the thing altel god is that old phone you were showing me last week, Jill? It's got me on that, that mindset. Um, but, uh, the, you know, kind of similarly, like they will, depending on what you, you know, we always throw roadside insurance uh, assistance on our insurance. And, uh, and, and you know, very similarly, like it's like, okay, where are you? You know, it gives you at least the number to call. I, I think one time I did do it like through like messaging on the app perhaps. Uh, so Geico was really robust with something like that. I'd be interested to see what it looks like today because, I mean, Last time I used it was probably like two or three years ago. So. It's it's interesting just based on the geolocation piece because I had, being the first time to Erie, like I had no clue like what the next exit was. Mm-hmm. The funny part was is I ended up to, to when I contacted um, emergency services and they ended up sending a state trooper. I'm like, well, if you have the Waze app, I'm the car that's been tagged. <laughs> on the side of the road after yeah. this cross street. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, listen, I've probably been tagged by now. So, yeah. It'll be interesting. <laughs> well, no, I was. I, we, we actually looked it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Someone else had tagged us. Oh, no, it's us. <laughs> you, and then you could drop a message on like, hi, guys, it's me. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Please don't uh, hit me. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, no, it's it's cool to see that. And uh, I haven't had a new enough car to be able to sign up for a service like this um, ingrained into it. But um, I have a feeling it's going to happen sooner than later um, uh, in, in my situation. Uh, who knows? Well, from that, let's go to the car troubles, the video games. Katie, you found something uh, kind of fun uh, with this. And this will uh, air on the side of uh, politics a little bit. So please bear with us here. But but you found something cool uh, uh, going on out there. Yeah, so the Biden-Harris campaign uh, is getting creative, and they know a lot of people are playing Animal Crossing now. Mm-hmm. So they've put out official signs, like yard signs that you would normally you drive around and see the ones that you see in folks' yards. You can now have your Animal Crossing, which is pretty cool, I thought. Um, so there's the usual key, QR code. You scan that. You put it in your system, and you can pretty much put these things anywhere. You can put it up as a sign. You can put it on the ground, you know, however you want to decorate with them so this is separate and, this is separate from finding it on another island to be able to 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 use it like you you just qr code it in yeah so okay. instead you can either draw like there there's the option to you could it's like a bit by bit drawing this out mm-hmm. or you could just go in there and um you essentially put the you know scan the qr code or um i'm surprised they didn't give you any of the other numbers but yeah if you scan the qr code um there's a, uh, the nintendo app on your phone and you go Bloop. And then that'll be in your, essentially, your saved uh, designs that you can put pretty much anywhere you'd like. You can put it on your walls, <laughs> I'm assuming. <laughs> you can get all, go all out. You go where the people are, right? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> and it looks and... like they're also going to be doing some digital swag, like voter education tools and organizational efforts on um, some other places beyond Animal Crossing, too, which is pretty neat. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's fun. I'm interested to know what the... What like the age demographic is? How many? Or listen, am- listen, listen. How many people talking about Animal Crossing on this show? You know, <laughs> I, I, yeah, have, have I, you seen I, Twitter? I like they're I, all like this. They're all voting age. Like there's a lot of voting, <laughs> uh, voting age. Because like, like, like the hashtag doesn't happen from a bunch of twelve year olds. You know what I mean on on, on Twitter. Mm-hmm. So although, 
<laughs> partially related. There was a po Pokemon something, uh, uh, oh, Pokemon Monsters EX, I think, came out. And the hashtag, the official hashtag that has a little icon of the guy by it, by Nintendo, um, it looks like Pokemon Monster Sex. And Twitter has had a field day with this. <laughs> So um, I, I sent that to Chachi because I was like, uh, this, this is this. It was like the first positive thing I found when I woke up today. And I'm just like, this, this is my day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So sorry. Um, but uh, well, yeah, go ahead. Animal Crossing has over 22 million. They, they've sold uh, 20, 22.4 million units of Animal Crossing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And even if it is a younger, uh, 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 younger age, that still could influence or probably reflects um their their parents as well so oh boy well so this so you brought this up and i and i it immediately drove a comparison because i this keeps popping up I, I it's like actually i think it's been recommended to me several times too this is not my awesome thing but just kind of an additional thing uh, on the side of this but there's a game on steam for free that somebody made um, i don't think this is by the official campaign but it's called super bernie world and it is a super mario style bernie sanders side scroller <laughs> like completely copying old school super mario brothers <laughs> um but uh yeah that that is a freebie you can play uh straight up on uh steam they have it available over there i don't know if it's on other platforms but they do have available on uh windows mac and uh and steam over there as well so so if you're not in the animal crossing you can i don't know play a statement there's like 12 levels in this thing too and <laughs> I think, wait a minute, I think the bad guys, because I just saw a bunch of digital pictures, I think the bad guys are like Republican senators, if I'm not mistaken. There there you go, there's an animated, there's an animated uh, Bernie Sanders, um, so I don't know, I just saw a flash across the screen, so I, I've i been tempted, I need to just play this thing just to see how it is, but anyways, hi. Um, so my awesome thing of the week is, uh, I, I, I started picking up on a show guys. I think I'm in the, I think I'm in the, the, the fringes of my watch list after all these months finally. <laughs> um, but I, I pulled up a show called Mars. I know that narrows it down. Um, it's a new, a, a national geographic show, um, that is now on Netflix and, uh, it, it, it's, it's really intriguing because it's. It's uh, it's it's playing audio here. Um, it, it's it's not just a a. It's a fictional thing, but it's mixed with actual documentary footage because you it keeps flashing back to 2016 and about exactly where we're at and what we think is going to happen in the space race and getting to Mars. But then about half of the show is also like a a, you know. It, it's an actual show dramatization of 2032, 2033, where we did get to Mars, or it's actually us getting to Mars initially and all the issues there. I'm about partway through season two of this. I think there's a third one that may have come out uh, by now, but they got two on Netflix. Um, and then aside from this, that also got me, because I know the Gi National Gen Geographic stuff is over on Disney+, Plus, so I've been watching a little bit of that, too. Again, kind of the uh, a lot of the Mars and the SpaceX stuff. Uh, of course, then you find that a lot of the documentary footage from those also is in this footage, so I was kind of getting a little bit of uh, deja vu when I was going over it. Um, but it, it was kind of a cool, different way, like kind of a, you know, probably it's still science fiction, but it's probably a more realistic or, or strives to be a more realistic science fiction. Um, I think it's partly produced by SpaceX, if you want to take that with a grain of salt. I think all these uh, docs on National Geographic are a little bit. Um, but uh, especially when Elon's kind of in the news this week. Uh, but uh, th th that's a show that's been kind of my, you know, sometimes let's check out the next episode of this. And, of course, I'm just still on my space kick from from uh, uh, the last couple of months so uh so but that's uh mars it's on netflix it's a national geographic show i'm sure it's going to pop up on disney as soon as those rights get released uh or something too so worth a, worth a look so i don't know if it, it, it was so, it was really an obscure find have any of you guys ever heard of this show no i i i have not but i'm now i'm now i'm intrigued enough mm -hmm. I'm, I'm running out of netflix so <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It gives me something to go to next. Oh uh, yeah, it's like you, you, you go through you go through the list of the coming soon. Is like something, something, anything, anything? Okay, okay. Remind me, remind me. Cobra Kai is apparently popular again. So, I did see I did see some people on Facebook like commenting that mm -hmm. um 
that they they've picked that up. Like I was, it, it almost caught, it caught me off guard to the point where I'm like, was there another season of this? Like what's, no. what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. It, it just, it got picked up by, uh, by Netflix and, and, and kind of re popularized, I guess, because everybody has Netflix versus YouTube prime, right. Or premium or whatever mm-hmm. it was. So, but, uh, uh, anyways, so yeah, I might rewatch Cobra Kai to be completely honest because it was that good. Uh, so, uh, I want to give a shout out to our friends supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Our buds over at Slice on Broadway, three locations, uh, here in the Pittsburgh area, Beachview, Carnegie, East End, no longer part of the PNC Park, but, uh, hey, they were for a good long time part of, uh, baseball when, you know, baseball was a thing. Uh, listen, man, I, I'm sure they're not running the Probani Brothers stand in there, too. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but they've been supporting us for a good long time. Most of our 10 years here on the show for the awesome cast, uh, filling our awesome tummies with some awesome pizza, uh, for us and all of our guests and co-hosts over the years. So give a shout out. Please support our friends in this time at sliceonbroadway.com. All right. We have a, uh, a submission by... Dave Potter, I see you out in the out in the uh, chat room right now. Uh, so apparently this is a new feature, and I failed to drop the link in here. But apparently uh, Twitter is uh, is making sure the quote tweets are just one click away. Uh, now I have not been in Twitter to see uh, how the new format goes when you're quote tweeting something. So maybe I'll experiment in a bit. Um, I mean, it's, it's it's been retweet with a retweet and retweet with com- comment, correct? Like, has that changed? otherwise here have you guys seen this change yet i don't think i have and i retweeted <laughs> stuff last week so yeah. i retweet and quote retweet like before it throws me i had retweet and retweet with comment i think is how it's, mine's been it still throws me when you retweet like with like you quote retweet and you can add a picture to it like i'm still not used to that and and it confuses me in context sometimes when I'm reading Twitter to kind of, it just, I'm not used to it yet. Right. So, but really useful, really useful with that. Um, but yeah, so the, so apparently coming up, uh, you'll see a quote retweet button, um, in between the count of retweets and likes when you zoom into a particular tweet. So so we're talking about the stats and everything on this actually. So when we look at this and I'll zoom in on this, you see normally we get retweets and likes at the bottom. You will also get a separate quote retweets as well, which always, you know what, that, that, that does help clarify a little bit because I kind of get, I feel like you kind of get lost in the, you know, Okay, there's this many retweets, but I didn't know quote retweets kind of got counted when you saw those numbers. Katie, do you do you know if they were included in the retweets before this, or were they just kind of an independent uh, uh, interaction? I don't know, to be honest. I, I don't know because it's I I think they are considered independent, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure. Uh, well, either way, they're going to be a little more uh, clarified there, I guess. So, uh, well, that, that's looking forward to that, to being, being a part of that too. I am not currently, it looks like they were looking at the, at looking at the web version here to begin with. So I'll, maybe I'll bring that up, but I'm not seeing it on the app side of things, uh, at the moment. Yeah. And, oh, and they, it only pops up when you click on apparently a tweet and, uh, no, they're probably going to do a rolling rollout for this as well. So, uh, we'll see when that when that happens as well. Um, Steve says he only saw season one of Cobra Kai. Sir, just roll with it. It gets good. There's some good surprise returns in that too. It's also, also Cobra Kai. There's a lot of, uh, oh, he's still alive? (laughs) (laughs) Happening with a lot of the actors that you haven't seen in forever. Uh, (laughs) So, uh, because, I mean, you know, not a lot of them are still working these days. So Uh, I'm still playing videos in Super Bernie World over here too. Good thing I don't have audio going. Um, let's see uh, what else we got here. Katie, you have a, another story you want to bring up? Let's talk about Waze. Mm, yeah. We, we both got to play with this guy. Yes. So, you know, Waze is uh, every so often they'll give us a special character. Recently it was Sesame Street. Um, you, you could be, I think it was Cookie Monster, Elmo. You know, you had some characters there. But now they brought in Batman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so and- when you, Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. 
So uh, when you go into your ways now, this was something I had no idea. It just kind of popped up and um, I looked, you know, under my looking for where it was going for my destination. It was like drive with Batman, customize experience. And I was like, let me check this guy out. <laughs> so you can change your mood, which is what you look like between uh, Batman and Riddler. Uh, you also have the options of the voice of either Batman or Riddler. And then your car can either be the Batmobile or Riddler's racer. Um, when you're doing this. So I, I definitely, I elected to be Batman and drive the Batmobile and I listened to Batman's voice and I think you described it the best. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I just need a guy yelling at me. So here's the thing, because <laughs> I said to myself, if this was Kevin Conroy, it'd be better, but it very, to me, I thought was obviously not Kevin Conroy, but according to this article you shared, it is the, mm -hmm. the, the Batman without doubt voice wise the batman anime series uh probably the batman you've heard over the last uh 30 years of batman anim animated um i'm gonna have i don't know if it's the context or the recording but it doesn't sound like kevin conroy batman to me <laughs> so but mm -mm. but otherwise it's just like it's just an angry man yelling turn right here yeah <laughs> that's one of the issues like well i guess it's not an issue because i'm asking a lot from an app but mm -hmm. one of the things with ways is whenever you do one of these fun kind of things uh it doesn't tell you what street you're turning down or no. what exit to get off of it just says turn left turn right mm -hmm. and yeah. it's like you said it's, it was like an old man or uh, <laughs> just yelling at me to make the left <laughs> it's like now, i'm sorry i'm sorry now now to me it gets more interesting when you, you I, I usually don't have the straight turn by turn if i'm going to just like you know over to your house or or, or somewhere local right um but i'll have it on just to see if there's any detours and mm -hmm. now on the way back, I said to Riddler, and I did that because, again, I'm just like, oh, it's just regular person doing this. But uh, I, I was driving up uh, West Liberty, and there's the construction there. And it's like, it, it gives you the, there's a hazard up ahead. And amazingly, it's not one of mine this time. <laughs> yeah. So fun. I, I might have to kick over and see what the Batman does on the other side, too. So yeah. we'll see. It wasn't too, I, I didn't, I don't know. Like, I didn't come across anything too exciting on the ride back from State College mm, to okay. have it say something but um it's available to october 31st so if you want to try you get a couple months to do it there you go it's so out of nowhere too um mm -hmm. because i there's nothing batman happening right like broadly right so well didn't they they just did the trailer right for well, the they, next yeah they did the trailer I, I don't know if dc fandom just happened i guess uh, but also i find um because I, I i'm starting to notice promotions and shows and tie-in events that are happening that don't have the original event to tie in. Like there's this uh, event called Game On on Netflix that's like the big show show. And um, uh, uh, I think that Garcia uh, comedian that has a show on there, like all the sitcoms, Netflix sitcoms, have a crossover Game On event where it looks like they're all in some kind of mini Olympics kind of thing. Like it should have came out during the Olympics that didn't happen uh, kind of stuff. So, uh, you know, movie tie-ins, things like that. Like, why are we talking about Mulan in March when it didn't happen? You know, kind of thing. So um, I'm curious to see the dog's piss too, if you can hear that in the background. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, but who knows? I, I, it does seem like they kind of dropped these out of nowhere. I miss when they had the Sleepy Hollow one. That was good. That was good. That was, your carriage has arrived at its, at its destination. Was, was was the highlight of that one for me. But, uh, Chilla, you have another story you want to hit up on? So one of the things that um, I also found is if you are, or, or read about today, actually, um, if you are a Google Maps user, which I don't know if Waze had this before or they're getting it too, but Google Maps is now showing, at least in select cities for the time being, um, where the traffic lights are. Really, it does. It does not tell you what okay. its current traffic light condition is. Like it doesn't tell you, hey, it's the red light ahead, but um, or green light go about to turn yellow, go faster. But it does tell you, like which intersections have stoplights, which I have found extremely useful on. Um, Apple Maps. So Apple actually added stop signs and mm -hmm. traffic lights to theirs, which is super helpful if you're in a in a place that you're not familiar with. Like, oh, which cross street is this? Is my dot perfectly 
you know exactly where I'm at. Is this intersection the one that I want to turn at because the sign's too far away to read? Um, I have found this 110 percent. Don't mind um, me. I was I was playing I was playing with maps. Use. I was playing with maps and it started talking. So <laughs> <laughs> on like all my Apple devices, so I was like, oh, hey, what's happening? So go ahead. But yeah, so so traveling even around neighborhoods where you know there's the random stop sign and mm. streets could be close together if you're not familiar with what the cross streets are. I I have found this invaluable um, when I'm going to places where I've I've never been before. Um, so I would highly suggest checking this out. The one thing that I need to test, and I didn't see it working, at least on my phone, but Crazy Krause told me it actually works in CarPlay, mm -hmm. is Google still does not rotate the map when you're driving, which has caused me to not be able to necessarily always use it. Uh, um, on Google Maps? On Google Maps. I thought it does i thought it's become sort of no it, it i thought i thought it does on mine on apple on your phone or in carplay oh in carplay it doesn't oh i haven't no and <laughs> on my phone it didn't uh yeah on my phone it does and i haven't used carplay for a good long time thank you covid uh but uh yeah no but yeah, you are right that on carplay it did not i remember it being a problem and i would go back the ways in in apple maps uh typically so, or there was only Apple Maps and Google and Waze wasn't there yet. So I was like, I went to Apple Maps because I, I just couldn't stand using the Google Maps situation. So, um, yeah, it's always been finicky with that, hasn't it? The, the other interesting thing that I noticed when I was getting the rental and getting my phone connected and whatnot was Zoom has a CarPlay piece to their app. So I'm interested that's, in seeing what that's, that's a bad like. idea. That's a bad <laughs> idea. Well, I wonder if it's just for like a, conference call or their calling side of their app i don't know i'm interested yeah, in playing around with it It has to be an audio only right it's probably mm -hmm. it's probably just patches into something like that Jeez, that's that seems, that seems horrible <laughs> what are you doing well i'm on my way back to here from erie so we mentioned elon musk earlier and i i don't think as a tech show anybody should pass this one up uh did you see his release from friday when he was showing off and demonstrating um, how they're going to um, um, patch into our brains, apparently, to enhance us. So, apparently, what this is going to be, I don't know if uh, you guys, uh, if you guys uh, were reading up on this or watched the, uh, the, the super cut I shared or anything, um, but it, the idea is, it, it, the, the, the boil down is, he, he said this was a Fitbit for your brain. It reads what's happening. They've been tested on, uh, I, uh, you know, uh, uh, I believe apes and and pigs. They had they had pigs that they were showing off with, where you know they could see where um, you know if it was making contact with anything with a snout, they knew um, the I and there's they showed off a surgery robot that's going to take care of it. And they say they they claim that by the time they get this thing to market, it's going to cost as much as LASIK surgery. But you know, it's attaching uh, a computer to your brain. Um, it's going to sit sort of in that area in between like uh, basically they would take a circle they said about about the size of a about the size of a coin out of your skull and it would lay into that uh close to where it's uh connecting in your brain with what was it about a thousand electro electrodes into your skull uh to points in your brain to make a uh, communication um, of course there have not been human trials there's an image of it as well it it wilds me out to see like like the charger for this thing connected to a standard USB for the thing that's going to be attached to your brain. Don't buy the cheap USBs off Amazon, <laughs> please. Uh, so, <laughs> but uh, it, this is this is wild, and, and and this I mean this is likely years off this is still preliminary for the most part uh, did you guys have any impressions from from what this is or um are just scared of that surgery robot in general i'd rather try the the covid test surgery robot before i'm willing to try this oh. one 
<laughs> oh, the one the one that uh, holds your place in head in a vice grip that we showed off last last week with Kim Lyons. Yes. Yeah. I, I'd yeah. opt into that before I'd opt into this as a as a first. <laughs> you don't want to be the early, early adopter. adopter. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to. You're not staying in line like the app store for your brain implant there, Chilla. Mm, I would do like a subdermal like crazy computer screen that allowed me to like switch tattoo like body tattoos like the screen in the arm that chachi always wanted yeah like i would do i would give that a whirl mm -hmm. implanting things in my brain just sounds like <laughs> you're not ready for that the the next step towards skynet mm -hmm, mm -hmm. oh that's the idea isn't it that's the that's uh you know order 66 whatever uh <laughs> uh katie what about you <laughs> I'm just picturing like you're in line for your Google Glass and like how <laughs> ridiculous that was, and now you're like, Zork's gonna be the first. You know, your head in the jar is gonna be the first one in line for. Maybe, yeah, I, okay. I'm not that on top of this. I mean, we'll see what happens in <laughs> ten years when they've they've talked me into it, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, I'm going to have to wear a hat all the time. I, well, they said that, that they would cover, it, it kind of covers. I, I can't imagine. I think you're still going to have a space where your hair isn't growing, right? So, like, if I, if I you know, like, like Katie, if you, you had as, as stylish a haircut as you're doing right now, I think that's going to be a little, it's going to stick out a little bit, right? <laughs> so. Well, I think you, it, depending on if, well, if they put a hole in and it sits flush against your skull, mm -hmm. they could just close it up on top and, you know, stitch like, it across I, and eventually I know, it'll be I, fine. I don't think the skin comes back over your skull where oh, they, so they did just leave it. a little hole? Because it, it's just they remove it and put set it into your skull. I don't think the skin grows back over. I could be I could be wrong with this. I mm -hmm. didn't get a good look at the pic, okay? Uh, so, <laughs> um, but uh, I really wanted to have an antenna. <laughs> so mm -hmm, we can mm -hmm. know who has oh jeez, yes yeah i mean that'd be the thing just like you know there was the um you know who has a camera on me from google glass it's going to be like we need to mark the people that have these things in their brains so um it also brings me back to johnny mnemonic a little bit if, if you recall that he had a thing in his brain that i think was 100 megabytes <laughs> and overloaded it um so i, I don't know I've rewatched that like sometime in the last year and it's amazing to hear the terms. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah. We, I, this is, this is far. This is, you know what? Elon got a rocket to launch and sit on a pad. Okay. I mean, not Elon, but the people he hired. Elon's money got a rocket to become reusable which is, as the documentary probably paid for SpaceX told me a hundred times, is really, really important for whatever's next. <laughs> so, I mean, between that and Tesla in existence in general to the to the factor that it is, I mean, that kind of is like, well, okay, this could be a thing. We'll see what happens with it, right? So, all right, let's, I got to, I got to grab something lighter after something like this. I, okay. Okay. Devastating, but interesting. Is that okay for everybody right now? <laughs> so, so flight simulator and we didn't we didn't read the story last week where apparently a, 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 a an error or algorithm or key error or typo made a like 200 and some foot s uh, a straight up sculpture in in some town somewhere if you were in flight simulator if you don't know so it, it's it's attached to like this open data for so when you're flying over the country it's like based on Earth, uh, Google Earth type data, but it's another service entirely. And, and uh, this is giving me trouble opening. But so it's based on that data, but not only the map data, apparently it is also attached to the weather data alive as it's happening. So people were virtually driving their planes, flying their planes into Hurricane Laura as it was actually happening here uh, in or near the states or you know g coming into the Gulf Coast uh, last week. This is fantastic. And of course, there's some great uh, Twitter pictures happening throughout here. And I do know there's a paragraph I shared earlier with you guys. I believe it is MetroBlue.com. Uh, it is a Swiss company that maps the world's weather patterns 
Um, it splits the world in a bunch of boxes. It, it uh, measures wind speed, temperature, pressure a lot more. And that data is, uh, they said it was only going to be limited to airports, airports for virtual pilots, but Flight Simulator is replicating real world weather events uh, with accuracy. So yeah, you can uh, roll right into a hurricane now. <laughs> and I imagine, you know, you're not going to go find a single tornado and have some fun with that. I think it's it's probably just a widespread weather event like you would have with a hurricane. All right. So I, you know, other, I don't think I can even get into Flight Simulator because there's, I, I don't even know if I could make the plane take off. Uh, <laughs> it's just going to be a crash simulator if I ever did this. Um, but uh, it, it's actually available on Game Pass, by the way. If you have like Game Pass Ultimate or, or want to drop the five bucks for the PC version of Game Pass, it's included as part of that, since it's a Microsoft um, Studio, technically, uh, program. Uh, Katie Chilla, are, are, are you interested in the idea of virtually uh, storm chasing like this? Um, I'm interested to see... Oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 go. I said it was better than doing it in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> That's true. I, I'm interested to see how many people will become like virtual storm trade chasers, and and to to your point, um, and and Dutter's hand motion of a plane going up and crashing. I'm I'm wondering how long it is till we get a bunch of people that are just trying to come up with the most damaging takeoff or crash into the storm. <laughs> but one thing I will say is that I'd be interested how they how they model that because one of the cool i saw a really cool video of it was one of the hurricanes that actually showed like the lightning swirling in with the storm from like a top-down mm. view like that would be worth flying over virtually i wouldn't want to do it in a real plane but virtually to get that kind of view would be pretty cool yeah that'd be awesome that'd be awesome uh so yeah man i i don't know what's gonna run on my old laptop that i have set up for gaming but i kind of want to just try i mean it is like a hundred gigabyte download how many dvds was that again when we <laughs> saw that story a few weeks ago uh let's see chilla what is happening what what is this uh oh this is this is a this is a Fortnite story let's get our weekly Fortnite update we do know that Fortnite has uh, uh they have they have limited you if you are on iOS or Mac from season four. That bothers me because the Mac version comes through Epic's own store. What are you doing, Epic? Yeah, they weren't. They weren't getting. A, Apple wasn't taking a cut off of them anyway on that one. No, they weren't. They were completely independent. It just seems like a extra slap to Apple or Apple fans to do that. But that's okay. There's stuff like NVIDIA GeForce now that you can play it on anyway. So, but the, maybe that's the reason. Oh, can you can you pull it down with that on the Mac? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's definitely it's included with the uh, GeForce now. It, anything in GeForce now you can play on a Mac. So it doesn't matter. Like Rocket League stopped working on the Mac. Like it, it, you can play it, but it doesn't connect to anything anymore. Even if you bought it on Steam. Uh, but it, you log into GeForce now and you'll get. It's just like being on a PC and you'll have everything. Uh, otherwise, um, no, no, that's a big pusher, and, and that's a big pusher. I've seen that banner a bit when they do a new seasons on GeForce now. Like they're putting that over too. So yeah, and, and they went one step further. I don't know if it was yesterday or it was within like the last twenty four to forty eight hours. Um, I got lucky. I got right in the wire. The, the for a while there, if you had purchased Fortnite while you couldn't. You couldn't download it as a new user mm -hmm. if you had already, excuse me, purchased it because it was a free download. Mm -hmm. um, you could re-download it on a device. Now yeah. that, now that they've actually banned the actual account, you can't. From what I was reading, you can't even do that today. Wait, so can I? Is that well, they banned all the games? All the the Epic release games are now not on the App Store. Can I still yeah, like go Infinity Blade. Yeah, can I still go download the Infinity Blade that I bought? Because no, because their account, you could have. I could have. Now I can't. Up until like yesterday. That is bullshit. This happened, listen, this happened several years for me. Uh, I bought a game, uh, THQ, before they went out of business, um, had a WWE WrestleFest, which was like a remake with the new characters, and I bought all the DLC for it on my iPad. 
and I can't download it again. Like because because the because the, the 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 company no longer exists, so their account no longer exists. That is that bothers me. So there's and, no more Apple that's, App Signer. That's where I start having a problem. And Apple is the only place I've been seeing this. Microsoft will have something. I can't buy something like Transformers or Spider-Man from Activision because they don't have a license anymore, or the old Ninja Turtles arcade game that they put out with Ubisoft um, on Xbox 360. But if I bought it, I can download it regardless or or get a code or something like that. Like They seem to be a little more forgiving with something like this. This is this is and now it's something like this like that was kind of an obscure WWE game that that got canned uh, when I got that but you're you're talking about everybody with Fortnite and Infinity Blade like it's something that Apple put o- put over to the moon that's going to be n- more noticeable for those kinds of practices I think. yeah I, and I'm I mean like I said before I'm they had to have thought this through and had you know metrics and analysis on mm-hmm. what the impact would be. I'm interested to see how many people, and you know, if Fortnite gets new users on new plat or uh, existing users on new platforms, they're going to dangle that carrot oh, yeah. out there for everyone to bite on. But I'm interested. I mean, they couldn't have timed this better with the the Marvel stuff, and now with un- un- the the unfortunate events with Chad Chadwick Boseman passing away um they've now added um a black panther area into the game they said it was already planned um and they're releasing sections of the map in phases from what i was reason reading i haven't played the new season yet um but there is a statue that they had all that they had already planned um on the island um for uh black panther so and the monument is called Panther's Prowl. Um, but I'll be interested to see if all of the news and media on that. And hey, if you're still having problems, and I don't know what the status is on Android, but if you're worried about that, because they've also supposedly not been, you know, they're they're supposedly not on the App Store or anything there. GeForce Now works on the Android, so oh. yeah. That's I've been playing a bit of that on there. I I spent I spent the holiday uh playing Dark Siders on uh on my on the the S8 that you gave me. And um, I did see I did see something where Fortnite was still in the Samsung store. Yeah, yeah. The, like the Galaxy store. They may not be in the Google Play store, but they're mm-hmm. in some of the other stores. Um I I I got to tell you it, this is um it's starting to become hard to be an apple fanboy right now or girl katie sorry uh <laughs> so uh, with, with this kind of news uh or the, the way that, that apple's you know just just all these all these tiffs over the app store lately and um and the, the and you know I, i'm a fan of the hardware I, I i think i will be for the foreseeable future um I, I, but you know obviously this is a game and that's bothersome for me but until we get to the point where there's a tool that's helpful to me that I want for my business that is under fire for something like this, then I would have to start considering other platforms. And um, that's not hard. <laughs> there are plenty. I mean, Android, I'm finding, I'm, you know, talking, working with some of, the, some of the wrestlers that are doing their own video production on their phones from the stuff I'm giving them. There's fantastic stuff, and uh, you know PCs are are great too. You know for the most part, uh, uh, if you if you watch what you get, it's just um, I I just think, man, this kind of keeps them open for it. You know, and if it, it becomes hard to 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 pick up one of these guys, you know, then I I I, I don't I, I feel like I feel like Apple is a little more, especially now maybe with the lack of uh, uh, Apple stores, um, vulnerable. To something like this, is that Katie? Do you have any 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 vibes like that? Um, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, like I'm not. I don't know enough to even try to. <laughs> so, I, what about you, Jilla? I have got, I'll be I, so I here's where I think it's all going to come down. I think that the truth is going to come out in the November 
the weeks leading up to Black Friday is going to be a true telltale sign of of who's where in across the industry. And here's why I say that. There is nothing from, from what I've been reading and experiencing, there is nothing but entry level shortages of Chromebooks mm. and shortages of iPads right now. And I'm sure it's schools going back, everyone's going virtual, um, that type of thing. What I don't hear is I don't hear as much about the PC market shortages and maybe it's because I'm too close to it as having, you know, an elementary student. Um, but the one thing that I've also been reading about is unlike most, unlike most years past, everyone was like, like going into the school year is the time to buy a PC because it's back to school. Yeah. Everyone saying, wait till November, wait till November, because everybody who didn't sell their equipment is going to be like fire sailing it because it, back to school will have taken place. Anyone who was getting a device year end, like everything I'm reading is that's going to be the new time to buy. Mm -hmm. um, but it'll be very interesting. Amanda, I said, she, I see took four weeks to get her iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. um, most computers were back ordered. My iPad Pro is still back ordered. Um, it took me uh, almost two weeks to get a Mac Mini off of the uh, website for a client uh, it, uh, beginning of July, I guess. Yeah, so I'm interested. To, like I said, I'm not seeing as much stuff in the PC market. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, like I think it was Lenovo, announced today that they were even getting back into the high-end Chromebook market. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested that I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think Apple's going to be hurting. Um, I think if any, and I think Microsoft's going to make up like on the windows license with teams and other, yeah. Yeah. The sale of other subscriptions and items. But uh, like I said, I, I would look to mid to late November to, to see what the Black Friday deals are and the deals leading up to Black Friday and into, into the Christmas season. I know Microsoft usually does like their 12 days of Christmas or whatever it is. I think that's when we're going to really see where the, where the market is. I am very curious if by Christmas you will start seeing whether you're at the Verizon store or the phone kiosk at your Walmart. It's going to be uh, Apple does this, this, and this. Android, this is the one where you can play Fortnite, Xbox Cloud, GeForce Now, like that. But you can't, but you can't, so you could do GeForce Now, but you can't get, for, like if a Pixel phone, you're not going to get, Fortnite natively. Uh, if you got GeForce, you will, you if will you got on GeForce, Samsung. No, 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 I don't know no, if no, you no. would on L. If you got GeForce now, you have all of it. If we if we take the, I'm trying to uh, appeal to the parent that's trying to help their kid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how many parents are going to understand all of that. Maybe the the kids will be able to figure the it out. The kids will push for it. The young adults that are into gaming, or it'll be the oh, I can get you a phone and not grab you the next five hundred dollar console and kill two birds with one stone, right? Or will or will the next big see? Part of me wonders: Is this going to spawn the next big thing? PUBG coming to iOS. iOS um, is pushing PUBG on iOS hard with the absence yeah, of Fortnite. Yeah, and then you get Let's um, see what you're doing there. Apex, Apex Legends is coming to Switch. Like, don't they have a mobile I, version coming too? They claimed they were going to have a mobile version. I think Switch was first, and that's mm -hmm. not launched yet. Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if this, to me, this is going to be make or break for for Fortnite. Like, this will prove the staying power of Fortnite. It will. If it will. Can... It, it's, it's, it's a high bet Epic is running with this. So uh, so we need something a little more positive going out the door here. Katie, can you tell me what Uber's talk, uh, up to here? Yeah. Well, Uber, <laughs> I don't know if this is positive. Is I it mean, positive? positive in the safety, I don't know. Safety, the safety aspect of things. I okay. I think that's positive. I like that. Um, so Uber, I didn't realize they were doing this uh, 
with the drivers, but uh, they're making sure that the driver and now the passengers are all wearing masks hmm. and using uh, selfie technology. And they're saying they're recognizing the mask as an object. So they're not actually scanning your face. They're just recognizing the mask as an object. And so if you were to, you know, if you were an Uber driver and you said that your passenger showed up with a mask, they mm. would be able to tell that, you know, they're going to go, oh, yeah, you weren't wearing a mask at the time you were in this car. I understand why they kicked you out of the car or. Mm -hmm. so I was can, like, oh, that's pretty cool. Man, can I, could I have gotten that when when five people try to get in my in my escape? Uh, six, seven people try to get in my escape. <laughs> And say what we can fit, and I was like, "No, this isn't happening." <laughs> so, uh, I got I, the, that is the that was the biggest uh, thing I would get uh, uh, swear words and slurs uh, thrown at me was kicking out one person too many uh, out of the car. So yeah, yeah, but I, I no that that's good because I, I yeah. I've actually considered because I I may need to u take an Uber here for a car drop off mm -hmm. uh, or I may be asking for a ride from somebody uh, so uh, but uh, uh, yeah because it's like it's usually it's like oh I'll come down here and just take an Uber back up the hill right uh, to drop off my car it's not that far but it's enough I don't want to take my day and go for that walk if I want to get to work uh, and then just like uh, th this bothers me you know <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know the whole idea of it but so this this. This feels better, yeah. and it would hopefully help me feel a little better if I was uh, Uber driver right now too. So if I if I had to go back to that, so thank you for thank you for sharing, Katie. Katie Dutters is on all the social medias. You can ca yes, catch up with uh, what's going on with her. Uh, I know you've been dropping some updates uh, in the well, last week, I think uh, at least. So yeah, that's uh, was, yeah. on the Instagram. Kate Marie PGH. There you go. And also uh, whatever relevant uh, Animal Crossing updates as well. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, of course, uh, John Chichilla is at Chilla on the Twitter. I think I'm also Chilla on the twerk. And what? On the twerk? I think I'm ch on the plurk. Oh, plurk? And oh, Chilla yes. on the bright kite. <laughs> Wait, what was the twerk? Is it TikTok and plurk? The, no, the plurk. Plurk. P-L-U-R-K. Yeah. Oh, no, I swear, I swear you said twerk. Kate, did you hear twerk at the, at the beginning there? I don't know how to twerk. Yeah. You don't yeah, know how to twerk. Work. Welcome <laughs> to the twerk platform starring Chilla. <laughs> that's that's the new yeah, that's uh, maybe I should start my own social media network there. Yeah. Oh. Welcome to Twerkcast. <laughs> and show title. Of course, I'm at Sorgatron on Twitter if you want to find out what's going on with me and uh <laughs> And, and everything going on. Uh, we're getting updates from how how Uber's doing in this town. Apparently, it's a uh, pretty easy. Whoa, forty five minute to an hour rate with nobody downtown. It's because nobody's driving, because no right now. Uh, but thanks, Steve. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, go check out everything. Uh, please follow everybody. Uh, and of course, if you dig this show, please uh, rate and subscribe on the podcast wherever you are. But especially on that iTunes store. I'm sorry, podcast Apple Podcasts. They changed the brands at some point. I don't know. Uh, and wherever you may be finding us to help get us in front of more people, we do appreciate Thank you. You have been our awesome audience. Please have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.